Good morning, it's Wednesday morning. Um, I'm just down the plot before I start work. Um, I've come down to do a couple of jobs. I'm gonna get this uh, sorted uh, today as well. I need to pick some more sweet peas and also the glads in this row here. I'm gonna get staked up at this very moment with a couple of canes and some string. So I'm gonna get on with that now and I'm gonna get on with the um, sweet peas and then I'll show you what I got done yesterday morning because I didn't record anything. Right, that's another tray full of sweet peas for Leslie to sort out at home. And that's them sorted out. There's not much life left in them, to be honest. But I should get another couple of loads in any case. Um, I have tied them back a little bit as well with some black string. Um, as well as the glads here as well, as you can see. So that should keep them upright. Um, until I need to put another section on, as you can see, the flower spikes are coming through here as well. So I'll have to put another, another one to support them when the time comes as well. But... I get some nice cut flowers off them. Just a quick look at the virgin land. Um, the top sections are starting to dry out now. Uh, I am going to tomorrow come down and dig down a foot, a spades depth, and get the rotavator back on it, and then uh, cover it all back up, ready for planting. So I'll get some more glads in and things. But next year I've got another seven beds here, which I can play with over the course of the next few months. Me one single bed of dahlias, looking good. I'm going to take a handful of dahlias in there now because they're ready to be taken and then uh, I'll show you the morals. So there's a few dahlias taken there and there's a few on the bench as well which I'll show you. Actually the stems on these, some of them are nice and long and um, some of them aren't quite fully opened yet but they will in the vase. Um, I do really like them ones. The colours on them are fantastic. They're called Procyon. Um, the other ones that I've got here didn't really have many stems, much of a way of a stem, so I'll just uh, take them home and it will be put wherever. Um, but yeah, not bad considering I haven't netted them up or anything like that. I'm just going to leave them. Lazy gardening. Just noticed as well, I'll have to get little Elizabeth down. The late cropping strawberries are doing exactly that. You can see there, we've got some nice strawberries on there and they taste delicious. So uh, I'll have to get her to come down and get these before I eat them. <laughs> right, on to the marrows. The marrows are doing fine. They're, um starting to throw the male flowers up. As you can see there, these are the male flowers. You can tell they're not the female flowers because they don't have the, the fruit on the back side of them. In fact, we'll have a look here. Look, there's one there. So there's a female flower there. So when that opens up, when that gets ready to open, what I'll do is I'll, I'll either get one of them male flowers or one of them male flowers and just cross them so I know what what um, which is really good this one here I believe is Lee Herons oh no it's not Mark Bags it's Bags is from the record um, it's actually got a side grow, side shoot on here which also has a female I just spotted it a female um, there it is there a female on it so there's a fruit there and a fruit there but they're too close so what I'll do is, I'll take them off and I'll wait for one further away from the plant. I want to be looking for something like six foot away from the plant. So that'll just spread out across there. These will all probably entwine with each other, to be honest. Um, this one is Lee Herons from the sea batch. And this one here has uh, got a female on it as well, which is there. So it looks like a little fatty, you know. So... Um, I've been just been moving the spike the spike here to keep everything down, pushing it towards the end. I don't want to bury too much of it, um, because you shouldn't really bury it all, because when it starts growing, it obviously pulls the vine, and it, you could end up snapping the vine. So I'll have to be careful what I do with it. And this one here is from the third place of Marvin, that Vince gave me when I was down there last year. It's a uh, it's creating all sorts of crazy growth on here. Um, got the side shoots coming off there now as well. Got what's going on with that? I don't know what's happening with that, but if we keep on going up here, as you can see, it's got a female of the flower there, which is no good. But this one here looks like it's going to be all right as well. So I'll see what's what, but ideally, I want three marrows of one off each plant. And then I'll cross, uh, I'll cross pollinate them when I get, uh, when I decide I want to do it. But in the meantime, they're coming on fantastic, nice healthy growth. I'll, um, I'll get me mildew spray out and start 
do giving these a spray with preventative fire for the mildew. So I've just come into the first polyton here to show you how the tomatoes are getting on. But before I do that, I've just spotted something which I need to get rid of straight away. I'll spin you around and show yeah. you. I've come in yesterday and I gave them a spray and uh, a rub down for, with bumper for rust that I spotted. But I didn't spot this yesterday. Hey, look at that. The little blight has leak moth, I do believe. I don't know, but look at the damage they've made there. So I'm going to dispatch them right now and check the other ones. So onto the tomorrows here. I've dispatched of them uh, caterpillars. Um, I'll have to be wary in future. I don't say it's doing too much. Anyways, um, tomorrows. I've got good news with the tomorrows. Now, when it comes to growing giant tomorrows, you don't want huge plants because you want all the energy to go into one tomorrow. Um, one tomorrow per plant will be enough. You will get the mega blooms, which were things like this on the first or second truss so you'll have a couple of flower heads fused together so that's a two two flower one so that's the kind of thing that i'm looking for and um, that one there is another all right one as well so that's the kind of thing that i'll be look I would, i've been looking for now i have spotted a couple um uh, on the plants and i've kept my eye on them and i've left the other flowers on to pollinate let the bees and the flies pollinate you can't hand pollinate yourself but i've just left it to uh, nature to see how we get on and i've got a couple of uh couple of flower heads to show you which uh, thankfully hopefully have, uh, have pollinated successfully for the camera work here but it is difficult to get into these um but as you can see on this one here that one there is successfully pollinated it looks like it was three three blooms three few three um three flowers so what i'll do is see that one's pollinated there i don't need that one anymore so i'll take that one off same with that one i don't need that one anymore I'll start taking all of these little ones off as well because I know that that one's been done. That one there, I'll take that off as well. So we're left with one tomato on that plant. And if I come up, I've got a second truss here, which, like I say, I'll just keep, I'll keep these ones at the moment, like that one there, I'll keep that one. Um, and I'll wait and see how this one goes. If it stays on, the tomato's fine, no, nothing with problems, then what I'll do is I'll just top this um, plant so i'll take nip the top off and i'll take the rest of the trusses off and that'll be the uh the tomato for that plant now there is actually one further down here which has also germinated as you can see but it looks like that one there is going to rot away it has started rotting away so that one there is no good so i'll have to take that one off so that one is going to be me my main one on this plant you take the side shoots off there now, the one that I'm most excited about, in fact, there's two. There's this one here, and the second one, which, as you can see, there's a few, few, it's all germinated on, it's all pollinated on there, and uh, it's starting to grow out of three, three tomato uh, flowers. And there's also another one as well, which is this one here. This one's the one I'm most excited about. As you can see there, there's lots and lots of tomatoes, lots and lots of flowers on that one. Um, and it's tight grouping as well. So that one should give me a really big tomato. So what I'll do with this one, look at the stem. It's like a double stem. And it's getting onto this one here. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, now I know that that's come through, I'll start taking these side ones off as well. Because this one's got a massive uh, flowers coming off the side of it. And the main, I'll have to support that that stem there as well. But it's a nice thick one to hold the tomato. So what I'll do, now I've done that, the top here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to top this off. So don't need any more. Take that off there. And I'll just take that off there. So no more growth on that tomato. So that's as high as that tomato plant will be. I'd say it's around about three foot tall. So um, I've got that sorted out. I'll be looking at the other ones as well. And I'll be here uh, keeping an eye on them ones and seeing how they go. But quite excited to see how this one turns out. And in here, let me show you the cucumbers. These are the giant cucumbers. I have taken a cucumber off, a uh, female, because it didn't want it on yet. I wanted to get it when it was about up the road here. So the next cucumber that comes on here, I'll leave on. And that's the one that I want to, to grow. Um, same with this one here as well. There's plenty of uh, male flowers. There's a male flower on there as well. 
I'll wait until the next one comes up and that's that sorted. These two are already planted out. I don't need to worry about them. This one here, I need to sort out. But as you can see, it's already got a, a cucumber on there. Um, depending on how far this goes up here, I probably, I might just leave that one on. I don't know, I might, I don't know. I need to pop this open anyways, because it's still in the three litre pot, uh, which I'll do this very second before I finish off for the day. Okay, so that's that um, last cucumber, put it in. So, um, to be honest, I forget which one's what. I've got long and heavy here, but I don't know, I can't, I can't remember which one it is. Um, but anyways, um, I want to get a giant cucumber anyways, out of one of these three, that's the plan. They're in, so the three giant cucumbers are in at the back, and them giant tomatoes are doing fine as well. So, uh, let the fun commence. Happy days. Can you guys remember the pip that I had in the shed? The one that had the rot on, on the outside, and I took the outside leaf off, the outside flag off. And I says, we'll see how it goes. Well, this is said pip. In still in the same pot, same compost, all these months later. Hey, I get a big onion. <laughs> Might even keep that for seed. Don't know, we'll see what happens. But at the minute, it's still growing. So let's <laughs> just see how big it gets in that pot. There's an experiment. <laughs> a job for tomorrow, if I can get sorted. Um, is going to be uh, these loofahs. So I've got a loofah there, and I've just put a loofah in the back here. Um, I'm going to pop that loofah into the, into the ground there. In a raised pot, um, just to bring it up a little bit, keep the base from being damp, and I'll just let it run, and we'll see what happens with it. Um, that's all it's going to be, basically, see what happens. And there's that other pip as well. So the other pip is still going strong. So we'll just have to see what see what becomes of them. Everything else is starting. That looks like it's slowing down. Uh, that one looks like it's all right. Uh, for some reason, the quality onions are bigger than the heavies. <laughs> it's quite amusing. Right, I'm going to head home now. To be quite honest, I'm not feeling too clever. So um, I'm going to get home, have a cup of tea, before I start work, and then see how I feel um, at work. Um, so it depends on how I feel. I might catch you over the next few days or not. I'll see what happens. Hey everybody, it's Sunday morning. Um, I, I did have plans. Um, they got knocked on the head pretty much by Wednesday afternoon. Um, I went home and I had a call in sick at work. Um, stomach playing absolute washing machines. I've had problems the last three, four days. It's been a nightmare. I've been chewing on Gavis going tablets like the sweets. Um, but I've, like I say, I've, I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, I've come down for a bit of fresh air again um, and to see how things are. Leslie and Elizabeth popped down the other day and uh, I'll just pop a couple of photographs up here and you can see what the two of them got up to. Uh, Elizabeth was enjoying um, looking through the onions and she was very impressed when she came back. She said that they were fantastic, which I agree with her because they are starting to look really good. I asked Leslie and Elizabeth to measure the onions because when they get to 21 inches round, they will be getting lifted. And look, we have it, they're 20.8 inches round so that'll be something for next week to lift up and i'll show you them next week leslie also decided to think that she was going to be um a climber so she wanted to climb the uh, giant sunflower so uh, as you can see there stop trying to claim your sunflower <laughs> but that's something else that's uh, grown really well and i think that was one of the ones that um I got mixed up because I think that's actually a tall sunflower as opposed to the large headed ones. But never, never mind that. I've been down this morning just watering the inside of the greenhouses and things because it's poured on rain here. Um, and I'll show you what I've lifted in from the onion greenhouse. So here it is. One of the onions um, was starting to go soft at the top and it hadn't grown anything in a little while. So I thought best pull it because I've already lost one. Um, and I've replaced that and I'll show you that in a second. Now this one here, I'll show you the size of it, but I love the shape. It's an absolutely beautiful shape. It's a shame it didn't come to fruition. Um, but this is going to be my practice onion. And I'm going to show you how to do, um, tie this with raffia later on in a few weeks time. Uh, and also basically just show you how to prepare it as well. So when it comes to onions, you know, what I've done is, I've taken it out, I've chopped, I'd say that's about four inches from the uh, from the top so i've got some neck to play with don't want to take it too low because this is where i'm going to be tying the neck and um, now i've taken this down to one single skin so as you can see all the way around it's just one skin i'm not going to sit and peel pick it because i could have taken another one off if you take another skin off 
it can lose thickness because it gets thicker and thicker. That's the reason as to why, what I normally tend to do is if I see a flag dying, um, I'll remove the flag from the top and just let it die back naturally because the skin will then shrink and then it'll be like paper to remove and it's not going to affect the the uh, side or the bottom as well because the bottom you can end up having to get remove large chunks and um, so the root plate itself on the bottom here what i've done is i've just chopped it right back um now ideally what i'll be doing here is i'll be getting a sharp stanley blade or a knife i'll level this off and i'll just scrape the bottom so it's nice and flat once that has been done i'll then set this somewhere that is cool and um I'd have it on the side like that so that any moisture can come out of the bottom and I normally sit these in um, shavings, wood shavings um, preferably um, and what I'd also do is uh, keep like a fan on them as well to get the air circulation as well to keep these drying off because what I want is one single skin without the skin pinging and what I mean by pinging is that when, it's, when the skin tightens it can pop so I'd have to restart the whole process again. I don't want to do that. Now, normally, I've been told that you can dry an onion in three to four weeks. I've given a good seven weeks because I tried to do it last year with three to four weeks and it didn't fully dry. It might have been the area and place where I had them, but that's my lesson learned. I've got good um, good fans now in the greenhouse uh, shed at home, so I'll be sorting a drying rack out for them, and that's, this is going to be my test, that basically. Um, yes, I'll be picking a couple of onions out in the next few weeks, but this is going to be the one that I'm going to play with first. Let's take a look and see what size this onion was now that it's dressed, should I say. Um, um, I don't think it's too far off, um, 20 inches. Um, I say 20, too far off, I mean like yeah, 16, 17, something like that. But uh, we'll see what size it is now. Just sit on the, trying to get the, the belly part. I've done this a few years ago and I noticed on the video back that I didn't wrap it right the way around properly. So. This onion is 15.3 inches um, circumference. That's not a bad onion, that. The big onion. So yeah, if I get them all round about this shape, all the way around for uniformity, I'll be very, very happy because this is one of my own saved seed. And I've still got some seed, which I'll be using for, for next year. And then the following year, hopefully have some stock from these onions. Um, for 2021 so from here on out i should only have my own stock that i'll be happy with something else to quickly show you whilst i'm in the top greenhouse here and um, begonias are starting to come out nicely here which is lovely to see you see these are just in three little pots this one huge look at that one it's a lovely size plant that and i've not just got them ones coming pink ones i've also got obviously red ones coming as well and also some there's some different ones here as you can see i've got a big white one with the white ones here so like i say it's a bit nice color inside of here so um the same with the i failed at these this year the collies they were all sort of going to seed uh flower sorry um but that's my mistake i learned from them i'll see if i can keep them going over the winter if not i'll get some more um small begonias there as well um i have also potted up uh, my hollyhocks so I've actually got one of these flowering in the back garden at the minute, but I've potted these up. These will be for next year. And also some giant pansies as well. So I've got all of these potted up for myself as well. I've got to get these uh, poppies out, the oriental poppies. I've actually saved some more, which I'll show you on, because uh, I went to my granddad's um, and, uh, yeah, earlier on. And uh, I popped, uh, I got some seed from him as well. Happy days. I've also potted up, um, all these seven uh, cuttings from the geranium, polygarium, uh, polygarium, whatever it's called, um, right the first time. So they're in bigger pots as well. So hopefully I'll get some more stock from these because these are nice as well. Right, let's have a quick look down at the onion in the greenhouse and I'll show you what I've got planted out in this place. I've got that onion. So we went to the onion greenhouse, onion house. Like I say, look at them, they're fucking fantastic there. I'm gonna get a couple of more squeezed in next year because like I say, a lot of the a lot of the roots are in the pots, so I might be able to get um, an extra two two in this bed. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Um but uh, 
yeah things are looking all right in here but i've um i've just popped the the pip in here whether or not it's going to grow anymore do not know we'll see what happens with it um i've also done a bit of cleaning up in here because it looks like i have got a bit of or have there was as you can see there just on the back of this onion here it's a bit rot so i'm going to take the skins back so there's no way so i can't see anymore so this is what i was on about before about taking the skins off i've had to take two skins off here and you can see it's getting thicker and thicker the farther it gets down but i need to do this so i'll get rid of what that rot rotted flesh so it does hopefully it doesn't affect the rest of the bulb and the bulb can keep on growing so it's just on the back there that's where it was i'll take that off just the affected area hopefully like the pip this will just keep on going but i'll have to keep an eye on this something i've missed out on so i'm going to check the rest of the ones while i'm in here so yeah the giant um giant pip is in there next to the giant onions um i've put some man powder down because i had a really bad problem on powder and, uh, and sorry and it looks like it, i've getting i've getting rid of those so thanks to me mum for that and powder um the all the rest of these onions are looking great these are the ones that's nearly ready to be lifted the size of them man they're huge fantastic it's my favorite i love the look of this one look at that absolutely ginormous there was one that i lost though and that was this one here in the corner um it had rotted from the center section underneath so what i've done is i've popped the loofah in here and because uh, it gets really warm in here when the sun's out um and i'll just see how far i get this loofah i know it's late in the season but nothing lost nothing nothing gained nothing lost i've got loofah seeds from uh, last year's loofah as well uh, if i want to start a bit earlier next year but that's good that's that sorted as well happy days this kohlrabi's flying now as well it's starting to grow a lot of side pups side sides as well oh hello mr caterpillar what the hell do you think you're doing in there two seconds guys apologies about that i best get this door shut check all his leaves as well um so these are still susceptible to the, the um the cabbage uh the like uh, the butterflies basically and the uh, the caterpillar so gotta be careful um like i say i was up saying there as you can see it's getting side growth on it as well and uh slime is doing all right so it's 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 not as big as others is but it, it's for my first attempt it's to try and call robbie for all intents and purposes so uh i'm pleased with the way it's grown in any case um so yeah we'll just have to see what happens with that the rest of the stuff's coming on all right these giant onions um this one's really tall really tall um and this one's starting to put weight on as well it's about 17 and a half inches round so might get a tw that, that's probably the best the best chance i've got for the heaviest of all my onions but i will be able to check the weight of these now as leslie did get me a present uh, the other day so she got myself a new set of skills so there we can um she's seen them on facebook i thought i was after some um just for the garden just to weigh stuff out and as you can see there maximum is 10 pound that's the aim for the onion <laughs> I want to get past that section to yeah. <laughs> so that's not too bad. Look at this price per pound of new pence. It's not a kilogram, it's a pound. Um, so, uh, yeah, new toy. I have to um, find a new place for it. Uh, somewhere it's going to be safe. But uh, thank you very much, Leslie, for that. Let's uh, try it out. We'll wear this, so wear this onion that I've uh, lifted here. Put the onion on. That's it. I'll just wait 20 minutes. Uh, there you go. Two pounder. On the button. On the money. On the old money. So uh, there we go. First onion of the season. Two pound. Right. I'm going to do a little bit. Um, I'm not going to do much. To be quite honest. As soon as I've had enough. I'll be just sitting doing nothing. I'll be heading home. So let's have a look and see what else I can get done. Um, or at least show you. Show you around or whatever the case I don't know about everybody else, but I've had a massive issue after that June drop um, and the high winds that we've had. I've lost a lot of fruit. As you can see, all the fruit that's on the floor down there. You can see it all there, all the apples and everything. But uh, there's not much left, to be honest. And the trees. And then, it's not one. I mean, I suppose they'll get, they should get big, but I mean, I can count by just looking there. One, two, three, four, five. There's about six apples on this tree. Seven. Seven apples on this one tree ridiculous um for pears 
pairs from all that blossom I had. I've got currently got there's enough there. But there was a lot of blossom on there and there's been a few lot been dropped on the floor as well. But um as you can see there as well. Plenty of pairs on there, happy days. I have been down here and I've planted some more stuff into the front here. <clears throat> the uh, Nemophilia 5 spot. I've got them in clumps. Uh, I've also just put these um, geraniums, just sunk them into the ground there. Uh, my favourite uh, glads there, which I'll be digging up this year. Um, they're beautiful, fiery red colour, um, which is lovely. Um, but other than that, should be uh, i'll have to take this loop this is a looping now <laughs> thanks everybody for that mentioned last week in regards to um, what this was i don't know where i got asked that from but it is a looping uh, the lavender's looking lovely down there and it smells lovely when you're brushing past it as well and um, i've got a cauliflower ready to go which is in the back of here so i've got one there it's another quarter clapping i'm gonna have to lift that actually now but i'm gonna take it up I actually notice this one as well so I've got one, two, I've got two left, three left, there's another one under there, four left, there's another one under there, and all, five. I'll tell you what, they're all going to come at once, these, aren't they? Look at that. Corkers, absolutely corkers this year, it's been great. Oh, excuse me. Large uh, turnips, swede, plenty of growth on the tops now. Can't even get underneath there now. You can see them there. Hopefully see what happens, make a bigger one this year. I've got some transplanting to do over here. We've got lettuce there, two rows of lettuce, two rows of different swede as well. So I'll have to get in there and get them sorted. Beetroot's coming on alright. Oh. I've taken some out because it's uh, starting to seed. But right, that one there. That's probably going to get a seed. I thought of all, it's probably going to get a seed actually. For some reason, not very good. All the lilies pretty much opening up now. There was just one lily, which I wasn't too sure what it was doing. Which one it was. Hope we'll, we'll see what kind of colour it's going to be when it uh, unfurls. The flowers are coming open and heads up. It's nice. You can see the black, black magic, I think they're called. They're nice, but facing the wrong way. I always seem to have that. See, these two are facing the wrong way. This one's all right. Hi, welcome along. Thanks for coming. And we've got these ones here. That's facing the way, that's facing the way, that's facing the way. <laughs> Plant them all the wrong way around. There's something I'll definitely grow again. And that's the sun gold tomatoes. Look at all them. I've got all these to pick off. I need to clear off the leaves as well. A lot of people don't bother. But I'm going to do it on this side. I'm going to take all the lower leaves off. In fact, I might quickly just do this now. Take them all off, the lower trusses, so we can see the fruit. So bear with us a second. I'm going to get this done very quickly. And I'll show you afterwards. And there we have after. So we can now see the fruits, the tomatoes. And uh, I think they're looking absolutely fantastic. I've got one that's ripening off there as well, which is great. These are all surely on the right-hand side. Um, now we don't take too too high up. I've only taken up to the second truss off um, So that I can help with airflow and things like that. I have spotted one tomato here Which has got a problem on it and I'll show you now on this tomato. It's got something called I may have told you beforehand blossom end rot Now this one here is actually double fused Actually a double tomato that one oh, That's quite strange. Let's take how the giant tomatoes grow I kind of put one off without snapping the other one off, so unfortunately I've lost two there. But you can see on the inside there, it's kind of what it looks like. It's starting to go soft on the inside. Oh, that's pretty peculiar, isn't it? It's a doubler. Twins. Oh, there we go. Separated them. Wish I could have done that beforehand. Um, but yeah, this one's got a problem. Take it off before it causes anything further, any further problems. But yeah, the tomatoes are looking really nice, the Shirley's on the right hand side here. And they uh, just need to tie in the tops, because they're reaching the tops. Now once I get to the tops here, because I don't want them getting any higher. So what I'll do is, we've got how many trusses we've got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six trusses. So what I'll do, this top truss here, what I'll do, just above the top truss there, I'll just nick the top runner off, so that that won't grow any higher. 
And that's it. It's as high as I want to get them. So uh, that's the only one that's ready to go at the minute. The rest of them aren't quite there yet. I'm going to pick all of these off now because these tomatoes, the sun golds, are ready to come off. And I've got my mum waiting for a few as well. So I'm going to get this side sorted well, out. They don't call gardeners green fingers for nothing, do they? <laughs> so that's them all done as well, apart from the one right at the back, which I'm not reaching for. Um, I've taken a lot of this fruit off as well. I've left a fair bit on as well. Um, you see sun gold tomatoes cherry tomatoes nice golden color absolutely beautiful and these are all the ones that i've managed to pick today and i've still got plenty of fruits to go as well it's actually it looks like a shirley's uh, sneaked into the sun gold side that's them ones there because they're not sun gold they're too big but uh, so far so good i am pleased with the way these are turned out in these buckets and just remember they're only 10 litre buckets with five liters of compost in they're only half full so and uh i say they're doing pretty well they need tied up and tied in but other than that i'm getting some nice uh nice fruit not for me i've already showed you the pumpkins um but you can see this this one's going mad now i only tied this in the other day it's grown a foot already i'm still waiting to see if there is a female coming on yet nothing yet um, plenty of side growth coming off it as well. I'm going to be swamping this section. It's too small for this. Um, sunflowers. Well, that's the one that Leslie decided she wanted to grow. She wanted to try and claim, sorry. Well, that one, right up at the top there. I'm never going to be able to see if the, um, the head's on it. So I kind of bend it over while it's snapping it. But let me just stand next to it for a size comparison. Again. Like I said in the past, I'm around about five, five, nine, something like that. There's me standing right up against it. Let's throw this one here, right behind my head. If I go up, nope, nope, <laughs> it's huge. These ones are tight ones. Got some canny size heads on them. They're going to be nice when they come through. Um, but and the other ones that's on the other side as well. They're rather large as well. So we've got uh, this one here. Would be a good one. Looking forward to seeing them open up in any ways. It'd be nice to have some more colour in the garden. Uh, Leslie did a top notch job down the bottom here, and I'll show you the Livingston daisies. Now, I do need to sort this horsetail out. I think being, I just pull it out. I'm going to get some weed killer for it. It's called Diamond. I've been told it's really good. But you can see you've got marigolds that Leslie planted out with the. Uh, with the Livingston daisies and they're all coming through, through as well. They're nice these because they open up in the sunshine, they close on the night time as well. Look, cabbages, these netted cabbages. I need to get this lifted up because it's too small. The giant, uh, the ones I had from my own saved seed, are pushing right up against it. But uh, these ones, I'm loving these ones. I really like the size. I, I do like running the giant cabbage, I must say. Uh, that one's holding up nicely over there, as is this one here. It's a nice specimen. If you could see it in real life, you'd see, you'd see the size of them. They're actually, they're fantastic. They're huge. I can't even get in. You see, that's a pallet colour. It's great. I will be growing eight of these four outdoors and four indoors next year. We'll see how they come. <laughs> Look at them onions just from the outside there. <laughs> Tormenting this because they're not quite big enough yet. People obviously are interested in my little challenge that me, Dave, Dave and all the rest of the guys I've given beat with Arvin. Um There's mine, that's the biggest one. It's put on two inches in the past week. And I'm pleased with the way its size has grown anyways. And if this is successful, I'll be doing the same thing again next year in this bed. I said it again last week, said it again this week. Birds are getting all these and Grandad Dave. I'm getting a chance to get down and take them off, which I'm not really bothered with to be honest. I'll take a couple now just to have a munch on, but that's all I've grown them for. What I'm going to do is, once all the fruits come off, I'm going to keep the new growth and I'm going to cut all the woody dead old growth off. I'm going to get in here and get all of this cleared out. That's a job to do another time. Turnips growing in the raised bed. I'm going to pull these now because they are a good size. If I get any bigger, they're going to be uh, difficult to get out of there. So just a couple of these are nice for a Sunday lunch. So I've got one there, I had one last week that was lovely. Another one there. Let's see if I can get another one. Which one's ready there? I'll see if I can get the one at the front. See if there's one at the front that's quite ready to go. Let's have a check. 
easier to get to. Inside the net. Oh, you like this one here. See what I mean? I've got them double doubled up there. Take that one out, that one should be fine. Happy days. You get in there. Three nice snowball turnips there. Can't go wrong with them. Lovely. Plot the plate today. I've had a bit of disaster with the cucumbers to be honest. I've uh, watered too heavily around the base of these two. And it looks like they've rotted off even though I did um, tie it up at the bottom there. Put a collar around. I've went too far, too much with the water. And I've ended up killing them two off. So I'm only down to two cucumbers. And that's this one plant and this one. Next year I'll be doing a lot better. I'll raise these right up and things like that. But uh, I'm getting some cucumbers on. Which is nice to see. So I'll just wait and see what happens with with what I get out of these. Look at these bloody Swedes. Oh. <laughs> like I said, I'll leave them in, see what happens. Well, they're starting to take over. I'll take them out not long. But why not? There's only the cucumbers going on that bed. Go my tomatoes. Actually, I tied these up last week. Um I've got some there's some plum tomatoes on them, as you can see. When I get a bit higher up, I'll do the same as what I've done with the other tomatoes with the ones in here. And I'll, uh, I'll take the bottom leaves off so it lets more air flow through. Just tidying up my hand, he's doing. Grapevine. Hey, not bad for grapes for the third season. Three years in, got a nice fair few bunches of grapes. I'm going to get rid of this vine here. I don't need it. Um. This one, I'll just leave that one. This one here is going to be the main one though. I'm going to run right across the top of here. And as you can see, it's doing a fantastic job. Ch -ch 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 Chilies. So, just giving these a drink because they're looking a bit dry. But I'm starting to get fruit on them, which is nice. These are all from Saved Seed from two years ago. And they are about three foot, four foot tall. And they're in five litre pots, final pots. I'm getting some nice, uh, nice fruit on here. So, I have some plenty of chilies and some I don't actually eat, which is strange. I don't know what this is all about. No, nah, don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, get some nice fruit off these onions that I had, all dried out. Any that's gone soft, give them a chuck out. You see, these are just the little ones that I chucked in. It's from sets. Not really bother with them to be honest, but uh, they'll do for little things in any case. So yeah, I've got a few days off this coming week, so hopefully I will get this bit sorted out and covered and get the glads in because I found my gladiolis. Um, the Charlotte that I put in with Granddad Dave, they're coming up, the flowers are starting to come on. So I should get a nice cro crop of these. Considering I've never grown in these beds before, I was quite excited to see how they turned out. Um, the Blue Bell starting to get the flowers on as well just nip them off as i'm coming along there's no really benefit of doing it but some people do do it some people don't so these five plants are bluebell and i'll keep these for stock for next year never ending sweet peas exactly that i'm picking these regularly every other day now um i'm going to do these again probably not do these again till tomorrow now because i'm feeling a bit sick but they've been absolutely beautiful again this year. A few weeks ago back, I think you remember I planted um, this bed out with Elizabeth after we made the bed and everything. Well, look at these, all these broccolis, all beautiful, all lovely, green and healthy. Fantastic, I've got them covered over. These are all broccolis up to here. And I've got some sprouts in here. So I've got the sprouts there. The bigger ones are sprouts, the bigger ones are sprouts. And then in the middles here, in amongst the weeds, I've got some um, some more broccoli. So I put the broccoli in the middle and they've germinated, which is great. So these are going to be my Christmas, uh, hopefully my Christmas um, Brussels sprouts. I'm going to get the net a bit higher. And then I keep coming down here, I should have some swede, which we do have. There's a swede there, swede there, swede there. And then the, between them, I did have sowns of something else, which I can't remember. <laughs> I will remember. Um, and down the bottom here, more more Brussels sprouts. 
with um, the beetroot just sprinkling in to the, the gaps. So I get some cracked crop with them as well, which is great. They will grow nicely as well. Take me by surprise. I only found out just until recently. I've actually got a plum tree on the plot. It's actually rather big. I need to get it uh, thingy down, but uh, there is plenty of fruits on here, as you can see there. So these are the these are plums from what I'm what I'm told. So it's nice to see if I can get anything off these. This here, pear tree. This is a small one. You can see, got a few pears on, which is nice. Nice. Come to the top and see what's happened with these ants and this carrot bed. So the carrot bed, I just put some um, ant powder on. And it's just getting rid of a fair few of them, but it hasn't got rid of all of them. So I'll have to um, do another sprinkling. But um, if you remember correctly on the live stream that I did, um, down the plot, I put one carrot seed per tray, per section. And I've gotten, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, one there. They're, they're all coming up, great. But I need to uh, do a bit of weeding out. I think I got to about here the other day. This is where I got to. Um, and then I had to stop. Um, but I need to get in here. But as you can see, look, there's one there. There's one in the corner. It's been moved. I didn't put it there. I put them in the middle. But all of these little weeds I need to get out. But I've had a good germination with all them carrots. These are just for, these are like for Christmas and stuff like that. So I'll just let them grow and see what happens. Um, see how they grow in any case. Dahlias are coming thick and fast as well. Which is beautiful to see. Couple of different varieties here. More cut flowers. It's a pretty one. Hopefully we get some longer stems this time round. It'll be a bunny one when it comes open. I have to put these in from last year as well as left them in. Once again as you know it's my favourite, favourite colours. Lovely. Just before I say my goodbyes, here's the harvest that I've taken home today. So I've got cauliflower, I've got leek, I've got three snowball turnips and some beautiful sun gold tomatoes as well. Absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to get myself put into them. Right, time to say me goodbyes. Well, that's me for this week. Apologies for the lack of content again. Um, I will get things sorted out again. Uh, it's been a bit of another weather this week. Um, a few more days off next week. Uh, hopefully get back into the swing of things, get a plan together. I'm looking forward to next week because I should be lifting some of the onions and that'll be exciting to see because um, they are on time for drying out and things like that. So I'm, I'm pleased with the timing of, because it's like I say, it's been a long, been long 12 to 11 months um, since I sowed them back in November or however many months it's been. Um, and I've getting it spot on with the timing. So I know my times for the next few years for the onions itself. Um, I've got the biggest leeks I've ever grown. And look at the positives. That's exactly what I'll be doing. I advise you all to do the same as well. Look at the positives in your garden. These are a positive for me because they do look absolutely beautiful and gorgeous uh, with all the other cut flowers I'm doing as well. But like I say, for me this week, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you hopefully on the premiere tonight um, and I shall catch you all next week. So thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your comments. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.